Why do so many drivers feel entitled and act disrespectful? Let's talk about it. All right, there's not going to be a spinning car this time because I am still at my Northwoods retreat and I don't have my computer and this is just going to be a raw, unedited, take what you get type of video. Now, I have to admit, I'm being a little bit facetious here because I saw my friend Dustin had a video out asking the same question about riders. And I'm going to be upfront. I didn't watch that video and I probably am not going to watch the whole thing because it was a two hour live stream. And I'm just not going to watch Dustin for two hours as much as I like him. I wouldn't watch a pole dancer for two hours. So anyway, uh, it, it just triggered something in my head. And I'm sure this is going to be a very unpopular video. And I'm guessing Dustin's is going to be a really popular video because I think asking why are so many riders disrespectful and feel entitled is the wrong question. I think the real question is, what about us? How does that same question reflect upon us? Because quite frankly, uh, drivers, uh, riders are not the professionals. Drivers are the professionals. And as such, we should be held to a higher standard. And the reason I say this is not going to be a popular video is everybody likes to blame the other guy. I'm good. It's that other guy that treats me like garbage. And that is such a popular view. And if you're looking for the populist, that is going to be the populist video and everyone's going to want to watch it. This video, everyone's going to say, no, you're wrong. You're going to see all these comments down here and people are going to be bitter and angry and upset. And the main reason people are going to act that way is people do not like to take responsibility. And it really is that simple. Now, I started by saying that Riders are not the professionals. We are professionals. As such, we do have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. People may come in with all kinds of attitudes for all kinds of reasons. And a lot of times it has absolutely nothing to do with us. But you know what? We still have to deal with it in a professional manner. People may come to us with all kinds of problems. It could be they just had a fight with their spouse, with their significant other. The boss just chewed them out. They are late and they want to blame somebody for being late. That's fine. So be the whipping boy for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour. So what? You know, people, I'm not saying that it's right. People should not ask, act disrespectful. People should not use foul language. People should not make accusation, accusations. That stuff should not be taking place. But you have to understand that everybody's world, as a matter of fact, most world do not focus on us, right? Most of that is focused on what's going on with them. And quite frankly, they probably really aren't they don't care about us. They're not really taking out on us. Well, they're taking it out on us, but we're not really the ones they're angry with or upset with in most cases. We just are the handy target. And, you know, if you can't deal with that, you probably shouldn't be in a customer service type business because everyone we interact with, we are 50% of that interaction. And if we want to put 100% of the blame on the individual because they came to us with attitude, they came to us with anger, frustration, resentment, whatever it is, we have to understand that the way we respond is going to be able to turn that around just a little bit. We have to understand and take responsibility for our 50%. I can't change that other person's attitude. I can't change whether or not they're disrespectful for me. What I can change is the way I respond to that. And response is so important. I think I may have said this before. You know, if you go to your doctor and the doctor says, oh, it looks like you're reacting to the medication. Would you like to hear that? Or would you like to hear your doctor say, hey, it looks like you're responding to your medication. You see, we can control responses. Reactions tend to be knee-jerk. They're things that happen without us being in control. And if you're going to be a professional and if you want to better manage those disrespectful, entitled passengers, you have to maintain control over your own 
responses and learn not to react. One of the videos that I bring up all the time is that video that we saw where that man was yelling and screaming and ranting and he was so angry and so upset and he was yelling at the woman, get out of my car and he was dropping F-bombs. He called the cops and she was, she was granted poking the bear with a stick and she was very calm saying, but sir, I don't know where I am, but sir, I need to be let off at the exit. You know, if this guy would have just had some composure, had some professionalism, and regained control of his own emotions, it would have been a simple matter to drive another hundred yards and get that woman out of his car. And he would have been the bigger person and he could have gone on and started making more money instead of arguing with this woman for 20 minutes or a half hour and losing his voice and getting his blood pressure up and not making any money. What do you want to do? Is it more important to, to yell and scream and rant and rave just to prove you're right? Or is it more important to you to get that person out of your car and move on? I can't tell you how many people I have met in my life that'll come into work and they are seething. What's the matter? Oh, someone cut me off in the expressway and gave me the finger. They're the ones that cut me off. Blah, 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 blah. When did this happen? Oh, 40 minutes ago when I was on the interstate. Really? This person has owned your emotions for the past 40 minutes? There was a wonderful scene. I don't know it exactly, okay? But in the TV show, Big Bang Theory, I know that it's garbage, but it used to be a pretty good show. And um, it's with Will Wheaton was talking to the Sheldon character. And Sheldon was saying something about how, you know, he is so obsessed with, with beating him. And, and he's been plotting for weeks and months or whatever the setup was. And he said, what does that tell you? And Will Wheaton says, that tells me that I have been living rent-free right here. And he's exactly right. That type of behavior and that type of animosity and that type of loss of control allows other people to control you when you... Did you just see the deer run behind me? There goes another one. See, look, another one. <laughs> and another one. Wow, look at that. Another one. Five deer just took off behind me. That was pretty cool. All right, so uh, you have to learn to be in control and be in charge. I see so many drivers. Down, and so, I, I'm telling I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Even though I'm telling you all this, someone is going to comment down below and complain and say, yeah, but. There's always the yeah, but. A yeah, but is an excuse. A yeah, but is a reason for you to not be in control of your own life, your own livelihood, your own job that you do. That's all a yeah, but is. And you got to lose the yeah, buts. You got to do, you know, what Zig Ziglar used to say, do a checkup from the neck up. It's your life. It's your occupation. It's your responsibility. You cannot control other people. The only person you can control is you. And asking the question, why do riders feel entitled? It's popular and it's going to get a two hour video. Are we going to learn anything from it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, um, you know, Dustin went there in his video. But I will tell you this, the better question to ask is about you and about your emotions and about the way you approach things. Um, let me tell you a story. You know, I travel a lot and except everyone, except one person did comment. I might talk about it in the coming video saying he doesn't believe that I travel so much. So apparently all those videos I made from airports, I, I just drove up to the airport and went and somehow got through security and sat at a gate and made a video just because I wanted to somehow fool you about my travels. Anyway, um, I travel a lot. And one time I was in San Bernardino, California, and there was a lot going on in the country. I don't know what happened, but Dallas was backed up. Now, Dallas is a hub. Dallas-Fort Worth Airport is a hub. And when Dallas-Fort Worth is backed up, it has a chain, a chain effect throughout, uh, you know, the country. And so I'm trying to fly out Friday out of LAX. They said, we can't get you home tonight because your connection goes through uh, DFW. And so, of course, everyone else was trying to get on other flights. And so the other connections were backed up. I knew I had to be in Long Island on Monday morning. So I said, can you get me to Long Island before oh, Sunday? No. What? No? This is LAX. you got to be kidding me. They could not get me to uh, JFK. They couldn't get me to LaGuardia. They couldn't get me to Newark Liberty. I, finally, I went to um, 
uh, to John Wayne, okay, uh, down in, in uh, Orange County. And I said, what can you do for him? I didn't go there. I called him. What can you do for me? They said, we can get you if, on a plane tomorrow morning to Denver. I thought, well, Denver is closer to home than I am now. So I said, get me on the plane. So I went down there, stayed for the night, got on the plane, got to Denver. And once I hit Denver, that customer service line was unbelievable. One of the longest customer service lines I have ever seen. And I thought, well, I can gripe and I can complain. I can moan. I can react and be angry and upset and ticked off. And I'm still going to have to wait in the line. So I thought, oh, I can have a halfway decent attitude. I got in line and I tried to strike up conversations. Everybody's in a foul mood. I'm trying to watch people go by. I'm trying to, you know, amuse myself in the meantime. Finally, I'm getting up to the front of this line. Four people, three people, and it's my turn. Two people, I'm almost there. I get up and a light bulb went off in my head. Just before I'm walking up, I'm looking at this woman I'm ready to walk up to. And I tried to change my perspective. And rather than thinking, here's my problem, I'm going to go up and bellyache to her like everybody else has been doing. You guys couldn't get me home. I was stuck in, in LAX last night and I had to go to different airports. I could do all that. You know what? I would still be standing there trying to figure out how to get home. So instead, I went up to her and the first thing I said was, not my problem. I looked at her and I said, it looks like you're having a really rough day. And she looked at me and her eyes started to tear up. I thought she was going to cry. And she said, you don't know the half of it. And for about three minutes, she told me her problems. Oh, our, you know, our, our furnace went out and this and that. And I just sat there patiently listening. And, I, you know, I'm thinking I'm probably the first person all day that cared about her. Now, when I left, I had all kinds of coupons for food and restaurants in the airport and everything else. Now, that's not why I did it. But it just shows you that there's give and take. And the way that we treat people, no matter how bad a day they're having, is going to have a positive effect. Now, that's not saying kill them with kindness, you know, you be nice to them. We're gonna, they're gonna be nice to you. We know that doesn't always happen, but I can guarantee you one thing: if you start yelling and screaming at someone, I can almost promise you that their attitude ain't gonna get any better. So, yeah, people are gonna get in our cars, and people are going to accuse us of things, and they're gonna blame us for things that aren't our fault. Sometimes we have to understand this person's having a bad day. Maybe their furnace broke down this morning. Maybe they realize they're late and they just want a handy target to blame it on. If you're in customer service uh, jobs, sometimes you just have to suck it up and accept that those things are going to happen. So I'm sure that the flaming is going to begin. But really, I think before we look to the outside and ask ourselves, why are people doing this to us? We should look to the inside and say, how can my attitude, how can my emotions improve the situation? I cannot change. I cannot control other people. The only thing I can change is how I respond to other people. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, everybody. Please leave them down below. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe and ring that bell icon so you know when I post new videos. And before you respond, try to respond and not react. Thanks a lot, everyone. I'm Mark from Uberhands.